Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa, and today I'll be covering evaluating evaluating expressions using rational exponents. Now, it's a, I'm going to go over a few examples and to show you some different methods for evaluating expressions that have rational exponents or that are not in radical form. So let's go right into it. This is the first example I got. Um, 8 raised to the 2 thirds. Okay. Um, in this case, we're not simplifying. We actually want to evaluate it to get an actual answer. So the best thing to do is to see if putting it in radical form helps us to evaluate it. So let's do that. Um, it's 2 over 3, so that means that it's a cubed root because the denominator represents the root and the numerator represents an exponent, so that means it's also squared. So if we rewrite it, then it's going to be the cube root of 8 squared. Now it's probably easier because if we square the 8, it's going to give us 64 and we don't necessarily know the cube root of 64. So the, easy, the easier way you can rewrite it actually is also cube root of 8 and then square it because it's much easier because cube root of 8 we know is 2 and then 2 squared is equal to 4. Now if you knew in your head that the cube root of 64 was 4 then you'd probably get the same answer but if you don't then if you know your cube roots there's another way of doing it. Here's the next example with dealing with negatives which are which tend to confuse people Say we had negative 16 raised to the 5 over 2. Now here's an important thing to remember, is when and when to not associate the negative sign with the exponent. Generally, if it's, a, if it's like this, where there's no parentheses um, tying everything together, then you have to assume that the negative has nothing to do with the exponent. So when it's in this, when, when the problem is given to you like this, um, you can also rewrite it just so that you remember like this. Put some parentheses around the rest of it, leaving the negative out, because that's, technic that's technically what this means. When there's no parentheses given completely around the whole thing, then you have to assume that the negative is separate. So then from here, we can put it into radical form. So this is going to be square root, because it's, say, the 2 in the denominator, and then it's 16 to the 5th. And since we, technically, we already do know, it's easier to know the square root of 16, I'm actually going to rewrite this with the 5th out here. <laughs> so the note that that does is that we can rewrite it now negative and then the square root of 16 is 4. Negative still not included though. And then 4 to the 5th. And then our final answer is going to be negative 10 24. So to remember that when there's no parentheses indicated from the beginning, then you need to assume the negative has to be completely separate. So you pretty much have to follow the entire problem as if the negative wasn't there, and then tag it on at the end. Here's the next example. 100 raised to the negative 3 halves. In this case, our exponent is negative. So first, let's put it into radical form. We know the square root of 100 is 10, so it's better to write it like so.
to do the so that way we that way we know to do the square root first and then apply the exponent. So square root of 100 is 10. So we have 10 raised to the negative third. And then if you recall, when you have a negative exponent, all that that means is that the base of the number really belongs in the denominator. So what we do is we just do it, we'll put it 1 over 10. And now the 10 can now be, up, can be raised to the positive 3. And now 10 cubed we know is 8,000, so our final answer is going to be 1 over 1,000. So don't let the negative exponent fool you. All it just means is that once you get rid of that denominator, all you're left with is with a negative 3 or a negative exponent, which means that the number has to go into the denominator. Once you put it, in, put it into the de denominator like we did here, then the exponent becomes positive. So now I'm going to do one more example. And this time, we did one example where there was no parentheses included or given, and now let's do one where they are included. Okay, here the negative surrounds the negative with the 25, so now we have to incorporate the negative into our answer. Okay, so now first thing you want to do is put it into rational form. So it's a square root, so it's square root of negative 25. I'm putting the negative inside because of the parentheses. The parentheses tell me that the negative has to be with the 25, so when I put it into, rash, into radical form, it has to go into the radical. And then this is all raised to the 7th. Okay. And now, no matter what we do here, if you were to, t you can take the square root of a negative number, so, and then even if you were to, to raise the 25, the negative 25 to us to the 7th power, that's going to be a really big number, but the number is still going to be negative, because when you raise a negative number to a odd numbered exponent like 7, the number is going to be coming out negative. So either way, it's going to, this is going to require us taking the square root of a negative number, which is not feasible, therefore this answer is not a real number. So that's always something to look out for when you're doing this. That if, uh, especially with square roots or with even num even with even numbered roots, if it's a square root or a fourth root, if the number inside the radical is negative, you're not going to get a real answer. So don't be fooled by it. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment located in Kuprian Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.